Time now for an in-depth analysis of today's market action. We're joined on the line by Dr. Yang jun Suk, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor Yang, it's great to have you with us. Happy to be here. Well, first of all, we're seeing positive figures in the NYSE despite inflation concerns. While Tesla went down some 3%, various key tech indices inched up. Do you help us paint a bigger picture? Okay, well, uh, after a five-week winning streak, the U.S. markets fell last week, even though it did rise on Friday. Uh, for the week, the uh, Dow fell 0.6%, S&P fell 0.3%, and NASDAQ fell by 0.7%. But because they all fell from record highs, the market is still very close to historic highs. Uh, inflation was thought to be the reason for the uh, downward market. But if you look at the movements, then the uh, downward decline actually started on Monday rather than Wednesday when the October consumer price report was revealed. So uh, it's not just inflation, but obviously inflation probably made the uh, situation worse. Now, U.S. inflation rose 6.2 percent year on year before a seasonal adjustment. That's largest since November uh, 1990. Uh, it changed 0.9 percent on month to month basis, and this is uh, uh, higher than 0.4 percent that they showed in September, uh, 0.5 percent, excuse me, that they showed on September. So uh, U.S. inflation may actually be accelerating. The uh, major culprit for the uh, higher U.S. inflation rate seems to be energy. Uh, it rose 4.8 percent just over the last month, and gasoline rose 6.1 percent again just in the uh, month of September. Other uh, items also rose as well. So core inflation, which excludes food and energy, rose 0.6 percent month to month. Uh, and this is 4.6 percent uh, year on year. Uh, and energy prices in particular uh, rose 30 percent year on year. Car, used car was, again, large price, uh, large reason for uh, U.S. price increase. It rose 26.4 percent year on year. Uh, new car prices only rose 9.8 percent. Uh, commodities other than food and energy also rose by 8.4 percent year on year. So U.S. is experiencing a uh, very rapid inflation. Uh, it remains questionable whether this will be continuing, but at least for October, uh, they do have a very large inflation. Now, the uh, il uh, U.S. did have a r large rise in uh, electric cars, Rivian had the uh, largest IPO since Facebook, valuing the company at more than $100 billion, even though it is only set to deliver 1,000 vehicles by end of 2021. Uh, even though this is a very new company, which is untried, uh, it's not known whether they can achieve high production and break-even point. Uh, valuation for this Rivian is now higher than every other automaker except Tesla, Toyota, Volkswagen, and it has a similar valuation to da uh, Daimler, Mercedes-Benz. So uh, it, the uh, Rivian electric car company does seem to have hit the market uh, in a very large way. Tesla, on the other hand, stock prices have fallen since Elon Musk have uh, started selling his uh, shares based on his poll to Twitter followers. Uh, Followers said that uh, Elon Musk should sell 10% of his stock. And while it's not exactly clear how much that poll has influenced Musk's decision, uh, he did start selling his stocks, and that accounts for a lot of what, the reason why Tesla prices are falling. Uh, going away from the U.S. markets, the European markets were on an upward path last week, even though they uh, ended up mixed on Friday. Uh, FTSE, uh rose, but it was much more volatile than DAX or CAC, which also rose but pretty smoothly over last week. Uh, Asian markets, Hang Seng uh, has been rising since the 8th. Nikkei and Shanghai has been rising since the 10th, and uh, they seem to be doing very well in early trading because China's industrial output and retail sales beat expectations. Uh, it rose 3.5 percent for industrial output, 4.9 percent for retail sales, which was above uh, the uh, analyst's expectation. And it, it is accelerating from September, even though uh, they do have some problems with uh, shortage of electricity. And a lot of people were fearing slowdown of Chinese economy. But at least from the October figures, that does not seem to be so, even though real estate downturn is affecting the economy. 
Well, back here in the nation, Korean stocks bounced back. Uh, top Kospi names like SK Hynix, Kakao, Samsung Electronics, Naver went up. Same for tech firms, including Celtrion. Help us break down the domestic market. Okay, well, Kospi, it ended today at 2,999.54, so just a snap away from uh, 3,000. Uh, it rose 1.04% today. Individual sold, institutions and foreigners bought. And the uh, rise in the uh, market today is attributed to higher than expected production and retail sales in China. Uh, even though there is a fear of inflation, it seems to be outweighed by hopes of strong demand for the rest of the year. Uh, and what's really surprising is that a lot of electronic companies did do very well. Samsung Electronics rose up 1% today, Hynix 4%, Centrion 9%. Comes on biologics nearly four uh, percent. So uh, if this uh, trend continues, then we'll be back into the uh, three thousand territory. The last time Kospi was over three thousand was November second. Kostak also had a very healthy day. It ended today at one thousand twenty nine point zero three. Uh, it rose today by one point nine eight percent. Individuals and institutions sold, and foreigners bought. Well, meanwhile, local investors appear to be turning their attention to foreign stocks and virtual currencies. NFT is gaining a lot of spotlight these days, but blindly going with the flow is not exactly advisable. Do share with us your take on the developments. Okay, much like the uh, Bitcoin tries to be a digital version of gold, NFT or non-fungible tokens uh, tries to be a digital version of an original painting and art. What NFT uh, T basically is, is when NFT is added to a file, it uh, like a picture, a video, an uh, e-book, and so on, it guarantees that uh, this is an original, and sometimes it also guarantees that there's only a limited number of copies that are going around. It does this by uh, using blockchain technology, so it's an electronic version of certificate of authenticity that sometimes you get uh, with a collectible item. Now, uh, the, uh, originally, the NFT hoped to mimic the original art market, so uh, files with NFT were put into auctions, and sometimes they got a ridiculously large amount of money. Uh, but now, uh, what they seem to be trying to do is to use NFT technology to sell game items inside uh, computer games. Uh, and uh, the, uh, using that technology to sell unique items inside the game uh, that can be sold to other people uh, using the NFT technology as well, it's catching a lot of attention, and potentially it could mean a, a lot of... Uh, a profit for game makers and uh, NFT technology holders, uh, but there's questions on whether Korean domestic regulations will allow buying and selling of such original game items uh, in Korea because there's no legal basis for acknowledging the ownership of these digital items, whether or not includes uh, NFTs. Uh, for me personally, I think NFT has a much more useful uh, function. Uh, I worked with customs clearance and some legal proceedings in the past, and whether you have an electronic document which is, quote, original, unquote, is something that is often uh, talked about uh, when you're de dealing with these uh, customs clearance and legal proceedings problems, and the NFT can probably be used to guarantee authenticity of certain documents. Uh, and it's probably going to be used there as well eventually, but not as quickly because, well, there's not as much money in it as game items and digital art. Well, the finance minister's upcoming monthly report may reveal some concerning numbers. Uh, there's also the Q3 figures to be released by Statistics Korea. What are some of the points we should pay particular attention to? Okay, well, the uh, most interesting figure will be the household survey. Uh, it'll to show uh, typical household income and debt uh, for the third quarter. It'll also show the uh, income disparity and spending disparity and probably the, the uh, debt disparity among uh, income groups as well. Uh, so that'll uh, hopefully show the extent of the uh, K-shaped recovery, how each income group is doing. Uh, also, October producers price index is also due next, uh, on the 19th. Uh, that'll show the extent of Korea's uh, inflation. Uh, for foreign statistics, uh, on Tuesday, U.S. retail sales are coming out. 
right now it seems that the uh, U.S. retail sales are strong, and it may lead to a engine for global recovery. Uh, but we'll have to see whether that uh, strong sales continue because, well, the uh, U.S. is fa- uh, facing a lot of problems on inflation front and getting enough workers for, uh, from their labor force. All right, Professor Yang Jun-sa, we appreciate you coming in and sharing your insights. We'll see you next time. Thank you.